from a bit of a hiatus. Uh, it's been really cold out here. Kind of don't really want to go out and do anything. But had a problem with the old snowblower here the other morning. Lost a belt, which happens. Um, this might even be an original belt or one very old. Either way. So it takes two, but I just put the one on because I needed to get it done so I could get to work. But we're going to put uh, the other auger belt on and we're going to change the dry belt while we're at it because I'm going to be down there. So first off, we got to start by removing this. And I've already got the screws out. Got a little ahead of myself. So that comes off. And you can see here, this is the one I replaced. And this is the one that needs to get replaced. And that one is loose. This one's a little tighter. And this is the dry belt. And then, you know, it might be fine, but I don't want to take that chance. I'm going to try and clean this pulley up. And, uh... We'll get you in a couple minutes. All right, so I've got it propped up on the, the front housing here. Um, I put a, a plastic bag in between my fuel cap and the tank because it's a vented, vented cap. So it was, when I changed the belt the other morning, it was leaking all over the place. So I did that just to prevent it from leaking. You probably could, should drain it, but I don't want to waste my time. Um, next thing we got to do is uh, pull this cover off. Uh, there's supposed to be six, and there was actually four bolts the other morning, so I lost another one, unfortunately. So I've got one, two, and three, but we'll pull that off, and then uh, we'll be able to see what's going on in there. All right, so we got this back panel off. And I've gone ahead and disconnected the uh, gear shift, because I noticed this is really tight I just tried adjusting or uh, changing the speed here and uh, didn't want to move so this looks really dry I wonder if it just needs some lube um, but I'm gonna try and get that loose you can see here this is this is shot too I've got one of these on order I don't have that today so but we'll do that we will show you a video on that so anyway uh, you gotta get this lower one off and then we gotta get this one in here. This is the drive. And uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with how these work. It's actually pretty ingenious. So, um, you know, obviously this comes off the, the engine crankshaft. And then when you pull the lever, it attaches here. So when you've got, uh, you know, physics wise, it's spinning here is slower than it's spinning out here so here would be your first and out here would be your sixth gear on this particular model well it's spinning upwards on this side but if you go to this side it would be spinning downwards which would obviously the opposite so when this slides all the way over that's how you get your reverse so it's actually a really cool interesting way how they do that I never really realized how that's how these worked um, as some of you might know, I'm from California, so I've never really worked on these before um, until I got to the northeast here. So, anyway, I'm going to get these belts off, and uh, we'll get right back to you. Alright, so we got all three of the belts out. This is the good one. It's a little worn, obviously, because I used it. This is the drive. And, uh, I don't know, it's, oh, there you are. Uh, it probably would have lasted, but I, I'm just not going to take the chance. I'm in here. I've got another one on order to have as a spare. This one is a dead auger. It's, here, let me, it's, you can see it's starting to come apart. So it was only a matter of time before this one went. Uh, something I just realized, having been in here now, uh, I'm missing the uh, the brake spring here. So there's supposed to be a spring on here that slows this down. It's kind of like on a uh, on a riding lawnmower. In fact, it's exactly like that. And I just there was a piece of the spring left over on here that I just realized. So I'm gonna have to order that spring up so this thing will stay stopped 
or will slow down when I uh, release on the. Actually, it probably needs to be adjusted now because it doesn't look like it would work anyway. But anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm missing a spring. And all right, we're gonna put them back on. All right, so I've had a bit of a snag, and uh, it turns out the belt I got for the drive wheels is the incorrect size. I believe it's the correct length, but it is uh, it's a half inch belt, not a three eighths. And uh, it's kind of funny because I entered the number I found for that into a uh, cross reference where I work. I work at a John Deere dealer. And it spit out this number, and uh, it is not it is not correct. I just spent about 20 minutes trying to get it on, and it uh, it isn't right at all. Um, it it just won't even, it's just too thick. It won't fit down in the groove. So uh, I guess for now I'm just gonna have to run that old one. Uh, like I said, I got another one coming uh, from Amazon. Uh, it should be here soon, but I, I can't even use this. So, just uh, be forewarned that uh, an MTD number does not always cross over to a deer number. So, that was a waste of money. So, uh, anyway, I'm pretty sure that the, well, I know that those ones work. So, uh, I'm going to try and clean this up. i got to find uh, something to do that with, but uh, we'll get back to you. So to clean that off, I'm going to be using a uh, an angle grinder here with a grinding wheel on it. Um, but I just wanted to take a minute and uh, remind everybody to use safety equipment um, when dealing with power tools. Um, you know, always wear at minimum safety glasses. These ones are shaded. Uh, they are OSHA certified. It doesn't matter if they're clear, shaded, red tint, blue tint. Make sure they're OSHA. Um, always wear work gloves. Um, if you're using a cutoff wheel, I recommend using welding gloves and definitely use a face shield. A couple years back, I had the safety glasses, I had gloves, but I didn't have a face shield and the cutoff wheel kicked back. And I'm sure some of you can see here this uh, gnarly scar I have. So, using a cutoff wheel, highly, highly recommend using a face shield um, it was not a fun experience getting hit in the face with one um, take my word for it so PSA over use your safety equipment thank you all right so we got this thing cleaned up um, I didn't go too hard on it I didn't want to take any material or too much material off rather um, you know it's uh, it's over a 20 year old machine so you know everything's a little loose but uh there was just some some rubber left over from the belt you know they get hot and they lose a little bit so uh just want to clean that up so uh, we'll put those belts on and we'll get this thing a test run all right so i just did a quick test run i got a couple feet in and uh this one popped off uh this was the first one i put on the other day I only changed the one that was broken. I'm starting to think that uh, it might have been a mistake because that one stretched out more than that other one. And uh, it just keeps falling off. Or it fell off, rather. No, it keeps falling off. I'm going to put it back on and see if that's if, uh, if it falls off again. But uh, I hate to have to do it. I do have a, an extra set here that are both brand new. That I might have to, I might have to use and have to get another set. This is, uh, like I said, I've never worked on a snowblower. I don't know. So, uh, all right. So yeah, that seemed to be the problem. Um, you got to change them in twos because now it seems to work. I put two brand new ones on there. Comes as a set. Got a little further in there. That's because that's all basically ice. It got warm the other day, and and it's below freezing right now. So uh, we're going to button this back up, and uh, that'll be about it. Um, I'll, I might do one when I get that uh, that friction disc in, 
and uh, that belt should come at the same time I, do, I might do another video then. If not, uh, we'll see you next time.